Hello friends, today in this video we will discuss about pedigree analysis of autosomal recessive disorder. So before going into details, let me explain about the term autosome and recessive. So as we know that in each somatic cells of our body, we usually contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, out of which 22 are autosomes and one is sex chromosome. So the autosomes chromosomes are the chromosomes that are not involved in sex determinations. So these autosomal recessive disorders or any disorder that is linked to these autosomals are usually occur because of the abnormality in gene function in any one of these 22 chromosomes. Okay, now the term recessive as we know that the traits or characters which are governed by alleles as explained by uh, Mendel's can be either uh, recessive or dominant. So for uh, disorders that occurred because of recessive uh, alleles in that case uh, the pair of chromosomes which are um, carrying that abnormal alleles so the both the alleles in that pair must be recessive because if recessive traits are present then only we can see the diseased phenotype okay so so in this pair of chromosome if in this homologous chromosome that is inherited you know, one from mom and another from dad so if both the chromosomes contain the recessive alleles so in that case this recessive disorder can occur if one of them contain a dominant allele and another one contain a recessive allele then the person will show a normal phenotype but it will be a carrier of a disease okay so for heterozygous form or a carrier form the person will show normal phenotype okay now if both of this l are dominant in that case the person will not be show the disorder so for recessive disorder both the alleles in this in the in the this chromosome need to be a recessive one okay if the chrome if the alleles are recessive then we can see the recessive disorder so these are the 23 pairs of chromosomes out of which one is sex chromosome and rest 22 are autosomes and defect in any of one of this pair can lead to autosomal recessive disorder so there are several features for this autosomal recessive traits um, for example this trait uh, occur in both uh, males and females in equal proportions so if tends to skip generation that means if they are seen in grandfather and mother then then that same disorder can be seen in grandchild the, there is a less probability that uh, the, the, the child the son or daughter of that grandparents will be showing the phenotype so it, it uh, tends to skip generations so this affected springs are usually born to unaffected parents which we will explain in, in, in the next slide and when both parents are heterozygous that means when both parents are carrier then one of fourth of the offspring will be affected so if both the parents are heterozygous that means one allele is dominant and the another one is recessive so if both the parents are in heterozygous form then one fourth so using quantity square we can see that only one of the child out of four uh, is carrying both the recessive allele and only it will show the disorder so for the parents who are the carrier of the disease only one fourth of the child will be showing the disease so in case of your closely related marriages between cousin this autosomal recessive trait can also be seen so let us discuss a pedigree chart so a chart is given at first whenever we see a chart we have to determine whether this chart is a dominant or recessive one so in case of dominance we will see that the disease phenotype which we here we can see uh, that is present in generation 2 and generation 4 in case of dominant that this disease phenotype is seen in every generation so here we can see that there is um, a generation is skipping so this can't be dominant this is a recessive one okay so first thing that we need to confirm that whether it is a dominant or recessive so by looking at the pedigree chart we can say that it is a recessive one second thing that you need to notice that whether it is a autosomal recessive or x-link recessive so for X-link, one of the uh, major future of X-link uh, disorder is that the males are more affected than female. Okay, and also you can see that in case where female is affected, the child 
which is usually a son will be affected so here we can't see the case where there is a female affected and a child is affected so this can't be your x link okay here we can see that the male and females are equally affected so it is a autosomal disorder so for x link we will see that a female with affected phenotype will have a diseased child so here in uh, generation 4 we can see that uh, a son is affected but the mother is not diseased so it can be a x link okay so it is a autosomal disorder so two things that you need to clarify whether it is a dominant or recessive and whether it is x link or autosomal so to let us discuss about this pedigree chart here we can see uh, in generation 2 and in generation 4 we find a disease one so uh, let us discuss about generation 1 so if both the parents are carrier only then only we can get a child with disease phenotype i have explained here we can see that um, when both the parents are carrier then in that case we find out of four one of them showing the disorder phenotype okay so rest this two and four can have either genotype this capital a capital a or capital a small a now when this two and four gets married to someone who comes from outside the family so this five and this number one which comes from outside the family usually in case of rare recessive disorder it has been seen that they are both the norm alleles are normal so the uh, so this persons usually have alleles which are normal for both the chromosomes so when this one and two gets married and we get three childs so two possibility can happen if both the parents are normal then we will get then we will get all the childs with normal phenotype okay so if both one and twos both are having genotype aa we will get all the uh, childs having the genotype this aa capital a okay all the child will be showing normal phenotype and their genotype will be aa similarly for this one four and five again one person comes from outside so since this uh, disorder we are considering it as a very rare one so um, let us suppose that both the alleles uh, in this case are normal and again four can which can be either the normal one or uh, heterozygous or carrier one so if we consider this also to be a normal one so again in this case we will find that both four and five according to Panetti square we are getting that all the childs are normal so again here we are getting both the childs having normal phenotype and as well as normal genotype but again we see that in fourth generation when this three and four which are showing a normal phenotype as well as having normal phenotype give birth to a child with disorder this means that both the parents must be a carrier so that they can give rise to a child showing the disorder that means this three and four of generation three must have a genotype of carrier ones that means they must have a generation of aa if they are the carrier then only we can see the child with disease one that means in generation two the genotype of this four and the genotype of this two must be this heterozygous because if the genotype is heterozygous for number two and if it marries to number one which is having a normal allele in both the chromosome then we will get 50 percent normal and 50 percent normal here we can see in punnett square so here we are getting 50 percent normal and 50 percent carrier so in this case this three number is carrier okay again for four and five if we consider this four to be a heterozygous or carrier ones and this five to be normal again here we will get a 50 percent carrier and 50 percent normal so again in this case here four will be a carrier and five will be a normal so when this three and four having a normal phenotype mate and give rise to a child in that case we will get a child with a disorder phenotype 
and as well as genotype so the genotype of 1 3 or 4 can either be the normal alleles for both the chromosome or one can be normal or other can be a disease type so i hope you guys have understood how to analyze the chart i will be uploading more videos on uh, x link recessive x link dominant and autosomal dominant so please keep watching and if you have understood please like and don't forget to subscribe thank you